Welcome to part two of, of my journey to the JFK investigation uh, to see what actually happened that day uh, when, our, when the president was killed. What I want to talk about now is what a forensic firearms examiner is and what the science is behind it. Because this is the evidence that when you take it, you put it together, tells you what happens. Basically, it doesn't, it doesn't take into account what anybody else says because you don't have to know. If I have the bullets, the cartridge cases, and the, and the rifle... I can tell if those cartridge cases were fired in that rifle. I can tell you if that bullet was in that rifle. I can look at clothing and I can tell you what's an entry hole, what's an exit hole. That is actual science. That is not up to interpretation. It's not up to anything else. You know, basically the main jobs of forensic firearms examiner, which I did for 10 years, was fi firearm identification, IDing a firearm. In this case, identifying the, um, the rifle that was a 6.5 Carcanone caliber uh, Italian military surplus rifle, identifying the cartridge. In this case, we were looking at Winchester Western 6.5 Carcano military full metal jacket ammunition. IDing cartridge cases to the rifle. What we're doing now is we're taking uh, fire cartridge cases, we're comparing them to a rifle. The rifle, we will test fire a cartridge case out of it, take that cartridge case, and we will compare that to the ones on the crime scene. And by comparing the individual characteristics on those is whether we can tell whether or not they were fired. In forensic firearms identification, we don't do probability. You have three answers. You have, it's an identification, it's inconclusive, or it's negative, it's not. Inconclusive means you have some of the class characteristics that are there, but you lack the individual characteristics to identify that to the exclusion of all others. So the microscopic comparison works the same for bullets. When the bullet passes down the barrel, you have the tooling that was to cut the, the, the barrel itself. Then you have the tooling that, uh, that cut the rifling. So you have all individual marks that are in there from that tool as it would wear between not just the, the, the cutters, say it's scraping material in there or, or whatever. You have individual marks that uh, set that bullet's, uh, you know, its, its microscopic characteristics as an exclusion to all others. During the examination of firearm, you'll tell trigger pull and, and so forth. In fact, the trigger was tested on the, the on Oswald's rifle, and it was not a hair trigger. It was over three pounds, so it was not qualified as a hair trigger, uh, as some people had said. And the next thing that was very important during this is gunpowder uh, in, in, in firearm residue. Tests that will enable you to see lead, if there's lead on clothing. Lead can come from the projectile bullet wipe. For instance, when the projectile that hit the back of Kennedy's jacket, struck his jacket, you would be able to see that there's a black ring around there where it wiped the residue or gunpowder residue right off of the bullet when it came through. That's a, that's a classic way of telling uh, where a bullet um, entrance hole is. Also, you will have a test for metals, for instance, copper or steel. Uh, that also could be used to identify any of the fragments that were in uh, the president's skull or any of the fragments that were found. You do have things such as cartridge case ejection pattern, which, you know, when the action is, is worked, you'd be able to see how far away the cartridge case would go. That was, that was a test that was done as well. The next is the shooting scene reconstruction. This is what really separates doing the information now versus back then. Now we have lasers, we have precision ways of doing everything for measuring, where back then it was done by hand. So what will forensic science tell us and what won't it? It will tell you if that was the gun that was used. It will tell you if those cartridge cases were fired in that gun. What it will not tell you is who Oswald worked for. So let's talk about conspiracies now. The conspiracy is not on what happened that day from the point that trigger was pulled. From the point that trigger was pulled, science will tell us exactly what happened. Now, for as far as prior to that, that's where you get in your conspiracy theories. Who did Oswald work for and whatnot? So the first thing you want to take a look at is the rifle. It was a 6.5 Carcano rifle, model 9138. 6.5 Carcano serial number C2766, bolt action rifle, is about 40 inches long. Had a sling, it had a very cheap scope. So how do we, how do we link this gun to Oswald? Well, it was very simple, a firearms uh, serial number trace. It was traced back to a ex, the importer, and then it was traced to the uh, to the, to, the, to the gun shop and sold it, which was uh, Klein Sporting Goods out of Chicago. Mr. Oswald uh, ordered it through the mail. It was through an ad that came in the American Rifle, uh, American Rifleman. And uh, it was for $12.99 for this rifle. And the scope, I believe, was an extra three or four dollars. Uh, and they had drilled and tapped and they had put the scope mount on it. It shipped to a P.O. box in, in Texas that was written as A. Hedell. A. Hidal was, uh, was a nickname or a surname that was used by 
Oswald. Hidel was sort of a cast off of Fidel because Oswald was a big fan of Fidel Castro. So in his P.O. box, they were able to, to say who was allowed to use that P.O. box. So you had Lee Harvey Oswald, you had A. Hidel, and then you had uh, Oswald's wife, were the ones who had access to that account. They were able to find the money order that was A. Hidel and had the address where the rifle was shipped to. So we were able, they were able to take the rifle and put it with Oswald. Next, they had a photograph of Oswald holding that rifle uh, taken by his wife. Now, unfortunately, when the photograph was looked at because of the quality of the photograph, you couldn't say to that that was that rifle to the exclusion of all others because you couldn't see the minute details, but it was definitely the same uh, type of rifle. Now, this rifle could be disassembled uh, into two pieces. You would have the actual receiver and then the wood stock could be, could be removed. Evidence. When the rifle was taken apart, a palm print was found on the underside of the barrel underneath where the the a hangar would normally be, which shows that Oswald at some point had to take the gun apart and his palm print was left on the bottom of that, which put that gun in his hands. So the rifle was property number CE-139. CE-141, unfired cartridge that was removed from the chamber. This gets a little bit interesting too because of the ammunition. The ammunition was made by Winchester Western uh, Cartridge Company. Now this ammunition was made for the U.S. government uh, for a particular African uprising of people who were using 6.5 Carcano uh, Italian rifles. Uh, it was a full metal jacket round, a very heavy full metal jacket round. That was lot number WCC 6000. 000 was a U.S. government contract number. And it also had a DA number, which was uh, DA 23-196-ORD-27. Now, <clears throat> according to the people who I have talked to, this ammunition was not commercially available. In fact, the Army didn't even have access to this, this ammunition. So one of the interesting things is, is where did he get that ammunition? Uh, that's something that I have not found in any of, the, uh, any of the texts or any of the Warren Commission or any of the reports is where he got that ammunition from. So what happened with this cartridge? By looking at the cartridge under the microscope uh, with a test cartridge that was also fed into the rifle, by looking at marks from the magazine and from the follower, they were able to determine that that particular round was cycled through the action of item CE-139, submitted Carcano rifle. CE-351, the windshield, the windshield that was removed from the presidential limousine. Now, on the presidential limousine, there was a crack from a bullet fragment that struck the inside of the, the glass on the, on the presidential limo windshield. Now, a very important piece of information because when you look at the lead that was removed, and tested, and you look at the way the radials were around the windshield, <clears throat> it was clear to see that the projectile came from the rear and not from the front. So that also is, is one more piece that verifies the shots had come from the rear. CE 394 was the president's shirt, and CE 395 was the president's tie. The shirt was cut at the Parkland Hospital, and it did have the hole in the back to, uh, where you would be able to verify the entrance hole. Presidential tie, there wasn't much information that was on there. There was a little bit of a nick, but it couldn't tell you whether you know, it was from a bullet or not. CE-399, the quote, magic bullet. Uh, this projectile was found on the stretcher from Governor Conley. It was a 6.5 millimeter diameter projectile, 157.7 grains of weight to it. They generally were around 160 grains, and that, that area in there was, uh, was the normal weight. Then you look, we look at what's called general rifling characteristics, or uh, general rifling characteristics consist of the same caliber, the same number of lands and grooves. In this particular case, it was four lands and grooves, right hand twist. So when you look at class characteristics of a, of a bullet, I have, that, I have that bullet, I have the characteristics of the rifle, we can say that that is the same class as that rifle. But what really identifies it are the individual characteristics. Now, people look at that and they say, well, this bullet was pristine. Actually, you know, it wasn't. Uh, if you look at the nose, there was some damage to the tip. And also, if you look at the rear of the bullet, you'll see that it is, is slightly flattened. That's consistent with when a bullet yaws. This is going straight, and then when the bullet begins to yaw uh, inside, the few, inside the tissue, in this case, it basically will push it and will squeeze. And at some point, you will squeeze some of that lead out of that uh, bottom of that projectile, in my opinion, that is where they found the uh, fragments that were found in the wrist of Governor Connolly. So, microscopic comparison uh, between that projectile and the submitted rifle. How this process is done is a cartridge is test-fired from the submitted rifle. 
So CE-139 was test fired with the exact same, exact same kind of ammunition. Oddly enough, the FBI did not even have any of this ammunition in their inventory because military rifles like this are not used uh, in crime. You don't ever see this. This is uh, extremely rare. They were able to track down the exact same kind of ammunition, so they were doing the best test you could do possible is comparing the same ammunition uh, to, to one another. So the projectile that was recovered from the uh, submitted rifle was put on a comparison microscope, and then the evidence was put on the other side. And when you're looking through there, you're looking for the agreement of class characteristics, the same number of lands and grooves, the width of the lands and grooves, and the direction of twist. And now we look for the individual marks, which are the striations that are caused by those imperfections uh, in, in the, the barrel. They're, they're transferred onto the bullet when it's squeezed through the barrel. And it was found, it was an identification, that bullet was fired through that submitted rifle and it was verified by another examiner. Next evidence, C543, 544, and 545, three fired cartridge cases. These fired cartridge cases were found uh, on the fifth floor of the expository building. Uh, right next to where the, the perch was where uh, the rifle was fired. All three identified as 6.5 Carcano caliber Winchester Western cartridge cases. So with the same rifle, CE-139, uh, the cartridge cases that were fired in that test rifle that were known to come from that rifle were placed on a comparison microscope and the evidence cartridge cases were placed on them as well. And you were looking for breech face markings. These are the machining marks that are placed, uh, that, are, that remain on the primer of the cartridge case that are impressions of the breech face. The breech face in this case was cut. It had unique individual characteristics. In fact, it had very good, uh, deep individual characteristics. And also the firing pin. The firing pin is a separate made tool, uh, made from separate tools, which has its own characteristics as well. Well, with a microscopic comparison, items 543, 544, and 545 were found to be fired in the submitted Carcano rifle, uh, CE-139. CE-567, a bullet jacket fragment that was basically part of the nose. This particular fragment was found in the front seat of the presidential limousine. Now, when it was compared microscopically, this fragment, there was enough information on there for the examiner to be able to say it was fired in the submitted rifle, CE-139. CE-569 was a bullet jacket fragment that was found on the front seat floor of the limousine. Now looking at the weights, uh, CE-567 was 41.5 grains, and it was clear that it was 4R. Now even with a fragment, you can generally determine uh, GRC by basically taking the, the lands of the width and groove and, and doing the math, you can identify it as well. So both fragments, uh, which cannot be said with a reasonable degree of scientific certainty, they were from the same uh, bullet, uh, you can't say for sure. Uh, but given the evidence that we have, uh, it is more than likely that uh, these two were from the exact same projectile. So both were fired in the submitted rifle. CE-575 was the clip, the clip which holds six rounds of 6.5 Carcano ammunition. Now, when uh, this was tested in the rifle, it did feed all the cartridges, but it didn't eject. With this one, when you fire the, when you load the last round into the chamber, the clip is supposed to fall at the bottom of the rifle. It did not. It fed the cartridges, but it didn't fall out like it was supposed to. C840, lead-like fragments from the rug underneath the left jump seat of the limo. These are small lead fragments. Other than verifying that they're lead, there was no way to say what they were. But uh, more than likely, uh, you would be able to say that this is potentially lead that came from the core of the bullet that uh, they found the two parts from. CE841 was a box containing lead residue from inside the windshield. Verified that it was lead, there was no further exam. CE842, four lead-like fragments from the wrist of Governor Conley. I believe this was from CE-399, which was the, uh, the, the solid projectile that was recovered uh, on the stretcher from, from Governor Conley. As we saw from the base of that bullet, it was crushed in, and you have uh, lead that, is, that, has, that had been removed. So my, my, my opinion, that is what that is from. CE-843, these were three lead-like fragments that were recovered from uh, JFK's brain. You had uh, seven grains in total. Um, other, than referring, other than verifying that they were lead, there was no further examination, nothing else that you could tell from them. CE-332, a 6.5 millimeter projectile found in 1974, more than 500 yards from the Texas School Book Depository. That was tested against the fired projectiles from uh, the submitted rifle, and it was found it was not fired uh, in the submitted Carcano rifle. My guess is that some conspiracy theory person decided uh, they, you know, they wanted to uh, find a bullet uh, they took one that was from the same type of rifle, but we were able to tell forensically that that was not the same rifle. Now, CE-626 is interesting because this was found uh, on the sixth floor. This was that elongated paper bag that uh, Oswald used to bring the rifle into, uh, 
you know, into uh, the uh, Texas School Book Depository. Basically, he took the rifle, took the stock, so he shortened it down quite a bit, put it in the paper bag, and just told people he was carrying curtain rods. So in total, this was the forensic firearms identification that we had here. It was verified that, that rifle fired the three fire cartridge cases. It fired the projectile that was found uh, on the stretcher from Governor Conley. It verified two bullet fragments uh, that were found in the front seat and in the front seat floor of the limousine. It verified that the, the, uh, the shot was fired from the rear by the uh, markings that were left on the windshield. The next part we're going to get into uh, in part three is going to be the quote magic bullet theory and uh, what really happened with that. So stay tuned for part three.